Hi everybody, happy Monday. I'm Chris. I'm Steve. And we are joyfully sitting in San Sebastian, Spain. We Ooh, just got Spain. here. Yeah, the entire We're week. We're in Spain? We're in Spain. <laughs> Where it rains very much on the plains in Spain. Uh, we're here the whole we're in Spain for the week, but we're going to talk about that next week. This week, we wrote a blog post about the hundred or more questions you should ask if you're thinking about being a nomad. So I'm going to put a link down below for all those hundred questions on our web page. And we also wrote a book that has more than a hundred questions in it and all the answers, sure. <laughs> all the answers. So if you want, we're going to touch on about five of those questions today and give you some answers from our point of view. But if you want the answers to all the questions, it's in our book. I'll put a link below, uh, but we're going to get started. And by the way, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe because we love having you here. We're up to like 333 subscribers. We feel like we're rock stars. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe you'll be yeah. 334. <laughs> yeah. And anyway. what I'm excited about is that we're going to be talking about where really what we've done in the last week and how we answer these questions in, in perspective of what we've been doing for the last week. Right. Right. So the first question, the, one of the number one questions that we get that we recommend when you're thinking about your nomad life is how will you travel? I mean, that's everybody just assumes I think they're going to take a plane or whatever. But that's a good question to think about in relation, because that really affects everything else you're going to do, how you're going to pack and what you're going to bring and so on. And we have discovered that because we're slow mads, a plane isn't always necessarily the right answer. So yeah. we um, are on a road trip, actually, and we picked up a car in Rome. We're going to tell you all about the car and how we rinsed it and everyone, all that in a future video. But we picked up the car in Rome, went to Tuscany, and ended up in Lespezia with the car. And why did we why did we go to Lespezia with the car? Yeah, so I mean, one of the reasons that uh, we got a car is to do some hiking in Cinque Terre. Um, did I say that right? You did. Yeah. We promised them last week. We learned how to hike this week. <laughs> so we're and, showing you all these pictures of Cinque Terre where we uh, went hiking, and but you can't get there by by any other transportation except train, and you have to get to the train station. So that is why, and then the reason why we have the car is because we wanted to get to Cinque Terre via train, and then we also want to do the entire coast of Spain and all those little bitty teeny tiny towns along the coast of Spain that you can't get to get to by train. So that's why we have a car. But in all of our realm of, of traveling, we everything's on the table. I mean, donkey, <laughs> yeah. bike. Of course, but, it, but it's really, it's the best combination of what are the mm -hmm. different modes of travel to do the kinds of things that, that you want to do. And in this particular case, we could have, you know, we're now in Spain and we could have just flown from Rome to, you know, to Spain and, and gotten here very quickly. But we wanted to check out these little towns and these are th things that we're doing for the future. Is this a place that we want to come back to and maybe spend some more time, maybe even live here permanently? And so we've been looking at places like Lespezia. Uh, Italy, which is a beautiful little town and on the port, on the sea. And the mountains. Italian Riviera. It's mm -hmm. just, it's, re it's really a gorgeous place. And uh, so, so that's good. All right. So then the next question that uh, you need to think about is how will you carry your stuff? So within the nomad community and the slow mad community, there's quite a controversy. I don't know if it's controversy, but there's either you're in this group or you're in this group. We're in the carry on group. So you're either kind of the carry-on group or the check baggage group. Uh, we are very much strongly in support of the carry-on bag group for a couple of reasons. And in this particular lifestyle, the one of the best examples we can show you from this past week was when we were in Nice, France. So a lot of people think if you're going to check your bags, the only thing you have to worry about is getting to the airport because the airplane company is going to take care of your bags for the rest of your travel. That's not true. You get off the plane, you get out the street, and then you got to figure out how to get wherever. And if you only have, if your Airbnb or your accommodation is maybe only a, a half a mile or a quarter mile away that you would normally walk, if you've got a 50 pound bag, you're going to have to get an Uber or a taxi or something. So we like the, the option of being able to carry on a bag. But when we were in Nice, we had this cute little apartment kind of outside the area of Nice because we had the car and we had to find a place that we could park it for free. Well, that parking was like around the corner, down the street, into the bottom of a garage, like two or three blocks away. Yeah, and we couldn't park in front of the apartment. So we had to haul all of our stuff from the car. 
I can't imagine doing that with 50 pound bags. Yeah, it was easy. And then we had to go two flights up. So and there was no elevator. So to be able to have something, you know, we've got our backpack, we've got our roller bags. It was easy to go, go up and down the stairs with it. They're just not too heavy. And of course, the downside is you can't carry everything that you possibly may ever need. So, you know, we're traveling and we're going to places that it's, it's, it's warm, it's cold. We're in the very beginnings of spring here in, in uh, the, on the Mediterranean. It's beautiful. But, you know, what we've got, you know, maybe we're dressed like when we were in Mexico, all you needed were shorts and a t-shirt. So we have to vary what's in your bag because you can't fit everything. You can't fit everything, you know, your, you know, your sweatshirts and your coats and your shorts and your everything. So sometimes you need to be flexible with what you're carrying with you. And if you and and realize that when you get to someplace cold or someplace warm, you might have to go to the charity shop or the Goodwill or go spend big money on a, a new shirt because you just don't have it with you. But for us, we try to we have a wardrobe that works from like fifty five to eighty five, and if we're outside that range, we need to uh, add add su add supplement it in some way. Yeah. So, but carry on is definitely the way we like to go. And um, okay, so next question. What will you do every day as a nomad? I think uh, we, as Americans particularly, we are in this culture that you, when you work, you know, work is a big requirement to your personality and your identifier of who you are and then and what you do every day. And then all of a sudden when you're not working, it's like, you, who are you? Yeah, and what do you do every anything. day? Yeah. We had no problem figuring this out. We were worried about it. Actually, I was more worried about him. I thought he would like, have no identity when he when he yeah, quit working, yeah. but we've had no problem. So uh, one example back to Nice, um, we Steve has been a big fan of the Tour de France his whole life, and so when we got to Nice, what did we do? Yeah, we rented bikes and we did the uh, the, the 2020 first stage of the Tour de France. We recreated that, which was just a lot of fun in our little you know rental city bikes. Uh, but it was it was a great experience to just kind of pretend and kind of feel like we're we're in that bike race kind of mode. So uh, that was a lot of fun. But the other thing that we're doing in this entire area is realizing uh, how much culture and how much art is here. And of course, we've been doing you know the typical museums and such, cathedrals but, and the churches and, and the yeah. plazas and so on. But but particularly the artists uh, to find out that they were born and lived in a particular area that we're gonna be passing through and maybe even you know died there or their studios was there. So for example, I mean, a, a good example to start off with is we were in Florence, which is the, you know, the heart of the Renaissance and to see Michelangelo, Michelangelo and, Davinci, and, and Da Vinci. And, 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 right, and, mm -hmm. and all those amazing things. But then to start traveling along the coast and going to uh, the, the uh, Cezanne uh, and his home and studio and in, uh, X, Matisse. X. So Cezanne was in AIX, France. So all you French people, if you can pronounce that for us, let me know. <laughs> anyway, so his studio was in Cezanne. Cezanne's studio was there, so we went right. to go check that out. Right. And then we were in Figueres, uh, Spain, where um, Dolly was big fan. If we uh, had some time in Tampa where the, the, the Dolly Museum is in St. Pete and just loved it. So it was really nice to go see what... Um, yeah. To go to his museum yeah. that he built right before he died. Before he died, it was his last. And he's project. buried there. So he yeah. was born in the, in the city. He created this museum. Uh, he 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 died there. Uh, that's where he's where Salvador Dali is is buried. And the museum is incredible. Yeah. You really get immersed in his lifelong passion for art and surrealism and his love of of art. Uh, and, and culture. So yeah. uh, that was, that's what we did. And we really liked know, the little the town day. too. Really cute little yeah, town. Yeah, great little town. And it, the opportunity again, you know, we're driving, we're flexible to say, hey, let's go right. And if we're, you know, an hour out of the way, we can go see something amazing that, uh, that is really going to, going to be, um, as was impactful for me to be able to see more and learn more about about these great artists. So, spoiler: we're hitting up Picasso in Madrid next week. So, Picasso's spoiler. coming. Um, anyway, uh, the next question is: What's in your wallet? Like, how do you handle debit cards and credit cards and cash and all that stuff? And I think the takeaway from this is you have to have financial fluidity, 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 <laughs> and literacy, I guess, with your wallet. So depending on where you are, you're going to use a different tool or a different vehicle to pay for things. So like in Mexico, total cash society, constantly going to the ATM to get cash out, using pesos to pay for a lot of things. About accommodation was yeah, yeah. probably the only thing we didn't pay for in cash. 
Um, but then when we got to Italy, it was all about um, using your credit card. Credit cards were used everywhere. But in the UK, every, using your phone as, you know, your Google Pay or your Apple Pay was very, very popular. Um, when we were in Nice renting out the bikes, we had to use, um, use our phone to make a phone. phone call to be able to check out the bikes. So it was a little bit of a process, but it was still a way of using currency in a way that we kind of hadn't thought about. Yeah, and the key is to be to be flexible because you know the other day we were um, to getting gas and it, it our, our credit cards didn't work. You'd think normally that you'd be able to use a credit card uh, to purchase gas. Uh, well, it's a good thing we had cash because the credit cards for some reason weren't working. The next day we were able to use credit cards yeah. to to purchase gas, so that was okay. So you just need to to be ready um, for you know what's going to come at you and what, yeah. what how. What, what different types of payments you, you may need. Uh, right. it, it might be Google Pay. It might be a credit card. It might be... I mean, just know. think about when we're going through the tolls here on the, the Autostrada going through Europe. You just you use your your credit card and do a contact list and just... It takes you seven seconds to pay the toll and you're right through. Yeah, so you don't that. even need to have like a toll pass or anything. It's just super easy. Just contact list your card and you're, and you're through the thing. So there's not one answer for how to do money it's a bunch of answers and you've really just got to be flexible and and have a literacy to what to use when and then the last question we're going to attempt to answer is where do you plan on staying is it airbnbs is it hotels is it couch surfing is it your friends houses whatever we have a minimum criteria for where we stay every night and that is at least a queen bed a comfortable couch a workable kitchen usually we want a washing machine and a hot shower and we want to be, you know, like near the train station, if we're going to be taking the train or mm -hmm. we want to be near Centro. And location is key. And this time, you know, we've got a car again, so we're, we're being a little bit more flexible, but we, won't but we need to, parking, we free parking, 40 euro. We've seen 50 euro a night for parking, um, which, you know, we're not going to do that. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, so again, to be a little bit more uh, flexible, uh, but also the different combination of things. Again, are we going to stay in a hotel? Are we going to use Airbnb? Um, lately, I've been using Booking.com more than Airbnb to to find accommodations. Um, uh, key with our to reduce our accommodations in, in hotels is using points. And so, if you want to use points, you have to have points. And so, we're using kind of the, the card hacking, uh, credit card Travel hacking, hacking, getting mm -hmm. getting the sign on bonuses with credit cards in order to uh, to get more travel points. So, for example, in Florence. We combined that with a deal. We used we used uh, uh, Hilton points. Uh, they had a promotion that if you use four nights of points, you get a fifth night free. So we were able to stay at a really nice accommodations uh, right outside of Florence, really close to the tram uh, to get uh, into town very quickly. But I think what's important here is um, a lot of people might say they're not they don't want to do Hilton and Marriott and Hyatt because because the it's just about a hundred depending on where you are they're using about a hundred dollars a night. I mean give or take. And that might just be a little bit too much for a budget. So you can't even, some people will say, I don't even want to start spending $100 a night in order to get the free nights because, or whatever. I think the point I want to make here is we were working on this 50 Hikes, 50 States project for the two years prior to us leaving the United States. And a lot of the places we ended up staying, because we were going to these, we were staying near trailheads, which were like out in the mountains or away from the city center. And so there was the ratty Best Western or the odd travel lodge hotel or the Ramada Inn. I mean, like poor pickings and poor places. And these places were just not the best places. But the good news is they were all part of Wyndham. And we ended up being able to score a bunch of points on Wyndham. And we were in sickness last night. We were at, in Europe, Wyndham has a, a beautiful line of hotels, luxury hotels, that we were able to cash in those Howard Johnson stays and turn them into these beautiful, uh, luxurious stays. So we stayed in Sitka. This is a wonderful little town on the, on the Spanish Spain. Riviera. Fantastic. Great Fantastic place. Town. Had a beautiful um, and got upgraded because we had status and all this stuff. And these were just, I don't think of us as hacking people, but, you know, when we're every night that we're staying in a hotel, every night that we sleep, we're staying somewhere, so we might as well get points or some sort of benefit out of it. And that's been adding up as we head along. So uh, I hope these, we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think we answered nine or 10 questions. Uh, the top 10 or the top 100. If you want more questions and more answers, read the blog post below for the questions. 
I get the book for the answers. Keep following us here. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because we answer these questions really kind of every single time we talk in some sort of iteration or other. And you ask us questions. So what is one question that you're really pondering in your either your nomad life now or if you're going to be a nomad? Are you wondering about how you'll use your cell phone? Are you wondering about how you'll keep in touch with your friends? Are you health wondering insurance. about health, health insurance? insurance. You know, all these questions. We answer those all in the book, but if you write them down below, we'll answer them there too. So we will talk to you next week with some stories from San Sebastian and Madrid. Okay. Adios. Adios.